I am not a financial advisor. I am not your financial advisor. And in fact, before you do anything with your money, you should seek your own financial advisor and do your own research before investing in any property. Yes, you have heard that from pretty much every finance YouTuber available out there. And in the last week, we found out why that statement is very, very important. Welcome back to Wrestling With Finance, the YouTube channel for people who have wrestled with finance in the past and look to do better with it in the future. And never has that been more appropriate terminology than this past week. So if you're not up on the whole FCX thing, I'm sure you may have probably heard about it. If you're looking at this channel or looking at this video, you probably have. But the TLDR on it is FTX was one of the biggest crypto exchanges in the world. They had a competitor by the name of Binance. Binance kind of called them to the carpet. Is This is really a summarizing way of putting it uh, as, as to their financial backing for the cryptocurrency exchange that they were running on FTX and also by extension FTX US and also by extension some other companies that they bought out like BlockFi, which I will get to in a moment. But the problem came around when we kind of looked into FTX's financial statements and what was really backing all of this money, billions of dollars going through its exchange and found out that in fact it wasn't as solid as they claimed to be. Sam Bankman Fried, Freed, boy, that's a play on words. It's, Sam was told it, or it's, it's SBF as he goes by on his social media angle, he, he was touted by a lot of uh, YouTubers and podcasters as being a guru in the crypto space. And he was doing all this good work and donating all this money. He drove an old older car instead of a Lamborghini. He didn't have Rolex watches or whatever. He was supposed to be this very altruistic uh, crypto investor who was a billionaire. And he had billions from FTX and a lot of the companies associated with it, which actually weren't supposed to be associated with it, but we found out they were associated with it. And that's where the troubles really started to happen. Turns out that a lot of what was backing the FTX platform was in fact them claiming, <laughs> claiming assets being their own cryptocurrency FTT and the value of it, which of course, that's like me saying, hey, if you put $10,000 in this thing for me, I'll make sure it's protected and covered by some imaginary money that I printed up myself. Binance originally was gonna help buy out FTX to help solve the problem, but then they later reneged on that because they, they looked into it and found out that it was way worse uh, than they thought as far as the situation with FTX. Uh, FTX US initially said that they would be fine, but of course they have now fallen under the, the sword of this whole thing and also BlockFi, which is what I'm concerned about. Now, if you noticed on this channel and on my other channels, I stopped promoting BlockFi as much as I was several months ago. Um, I started advocating like some other people have advocating, thinking that the crypto space was getting a little bit too crazy to put your stuff on a ledger, which again, I still need to make, put that, I just don't need to post the ledger video and how to take your crypto and put it on a ledger, which I um, am doing myself, have done myself, with the exception of the fact that I did leave about $500 in crypto on BlockFi, which goes to a bigger problem. And this is specifically about the BlockFi side of it is because in order to get it off of there, you have to have $50,000 to be able to make a wire transfer and change that into cash into your bank account. Or you have to go in and set up an address with a different crypto exchange like Coinbase or your ledger or whatever to be able to take your crypto off of BlockFi and transfer it over. But if you initialize that, it takes seven days for it to get there or for you to even be able to use that to transfer, which of course, if BlockFi, uh, which I believe at the time of this recording is probably already done, has canceled the ability to be able to withdraw from your account, that could be problematic. This does go into a bunch of different things too. Of course, the number one fundamental for me personally is again, having $500 kind of probably now stuck on BlockFi until this gets resolved and God knows if I'm ever gonna get it back. It is a good thing to, again, A, to never invest money in more speculative investments. This is financial stuff that people always talk about. Then you are willing to lose because you could lose it all. That's with anything involving investment. You normally don't expect to lose it all, but the possibility is always there. And as we see, when you have fraudulent people in this space, the possibility becomes a reality. The other thing is I would, if I was you and you are somebody who lost money on FT or has money stuck on FTX or FTX US or BlockFi or any of these places to turn on your Google notifications for those specific keywords so you are aware because there's likely to gonna be lawsuits possibly, I, I would be surprised if there weren't class action lawsuits in order for people to get their money back 
Uh, which also begs the question is where all of this money go to? Well, FTX was involved with a lot of promotions. In fact, if you watch the Super Bowl, you probably saw where millions and millions of dollars went to, to Tom Brady and to a lot of other celebrities and a lot of billboards and a lot of people on YouTube. Now, I'm not going to get into the dunk party that's going on right now with the big time financial YouTubers because everybody who's a mid to lower level financial YouTuber has been dunking on them and I could follow with the crew and go, yeah, I never supported because I never did promote FTX on this channel. Any other YouTubers I'm talking about, like Minority Mindset, the ones I have like linked to, Minority Mindset, me, Kevin, who's had his own, he's had an interesting year, uh, Andre Jink and Graham Stefan, a bunch of other people too. Uh, but a lot of those people, they also had tens of to hundreds of thousands of dollars in FTX and they themselves probably lost a lot of money. So oh, on one hand, it is a thing to kind of, you know, wag a finger at them and go, man, they should have known better than to do this. And they were just chasing the money, but they also put their money where their mouth is. Cause a lot of them, as we all know, have their money in FTX and might possibly be losing a lot of it. One correction I didn't know though is that Andre Jeek has been like myself saying for months now to not leave your money on these crypto exchanges and to put it on a ledger as opposed to holding it on there. So he at one point, I know somebody said that he had like $500,000 in BlockFi, which I believe since then, if what he says in his videos is to be true, which it usually is with him, uh, that he no longer is holding his money there. He usually says, go get the bonus and then sign up, get the bonus, then take the money off and put it in a ledger. So I don't know if Andre Jeek, I don't know his personal finances. Uh, this for the rest of them, a lot of them look bad. There's a lot of egg on a lot of people's faces. There's a lot of egg on a lot of finance YouTuber spaces because any of us who have affiliate links or who have partnerships with any of these other companies, eventually you're going to get hosed. CoffeeZilla is like, he's the big one benefiting from all this because he's, his channel is really not a financial education channel. It's more of a finance warning channel. He warns about all these things in the financial space. Don't do this. Don't do that. This is a fraud. This is a sham. And now he's just gleefully, happily, you know, dunking on everybody along with a bunch of other YouTubers who I've never heard of before. And of course, now they're all coming out because this is a big story and they're all making ad revenue on dunking on the guys that were bigger in this space. Again, I'm not gonna do that because these things have a way to kind of come back around and all the people who are gleefully dunking now, you might be caught up in some shit in the future yourself. So I would be kind of careful about all the gleeful smiles and the happy, oh, screw these guys kind of thing. As far as the uh, the big name finance YouTubers and what they're going to do, do I think this is going to affect them that much? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I think the effect I'm really worried about is on the cryptocurrency market itself, which is tanked completely again this year because of all this stuff with FTX. And this Sam Bankman fraud, freed, fried, whatever his name is, this guy, again, even though I didn't sponsor FTX, I didn't promote FTX on this channel, I know a lot of people had their money tied up in it. I never had any money in on it. So I can only imagine people who had, you know, $1,000, $10,000, $50,000, $100,000 on these platforms. And now all that money is, who knows? Um, somebody's gonna be in a lot of trouble and I don't know uh, how much trouble any of the YouTubers are gonna get into it. But I do think that uh, a lot of people who were involved with FTX might have some issues with it. But I think this all really comes down. I'm not blaming the YouTubers. I'm not blaming Tom Brady. I'm not blaming whoever that the actor was that was in the Super Bowl commercials. I'm not blaming Kevin Leary or BlackRock or any of the other big name, well-established, very intelligent finance people who were invested in FTX for this. I'm not blaming any of the politicians who were taking money from FTX for this. This is really on Sam Bankman fraud, freed, fried, Ro, Fum, whatever his name is. This is really on him and him running this scam on a lot of people. And what I really get out of all of this personally is that, you know, to be a lot more cautious about the affiliate links that I use, um, I still use Coinbase. I'm kind of rethinking that right now, even though Coinbase is another group that's celebrating right now. And God knows in two months, we could find out something about Coinbase that goes down the toilet. So I don't know if they really should be rah rahing this right now, but. Um, I'm still using Coinbase for the long term, the short term to buy things and for the long term moving all of my crypto off onto the ledger. I did move all, a lot of my crypto off of Coinbase today as well. Um, I, again, I'm not a financial advisor, so I can't advise you what to do, but I can tell you what I'm doing. 
Um, I don't, and I never use Robinhood or Webull or any, any of those exchanges for crypto. The main thing that I think I'm going to stick to from here on out, despite how much interest somebody's going to offer for you storing your crypto on their platform, whether it's Vault, which I've talked about before, or any of these other places, is to basically just take that money once you can remove it and move it off of those platforms. And ultimately, this is very bad for the crypto space because I think there are a lot of people who are going to be shocked out of the crypto space, which will probably prevent it from growing. So. Thanks a lot, SBF, whatever the hell this dude's name is, and everybody else who uh, is involved in these kind of fraudulent things or wants to try to get an advantage on your competitor, but then wind up tanking the whole crypto space in itself. Anyway, uh, you guys did a great service. I remember having a conversation. It was a year ago when I went to Vegas because I'm about to go back to Vegas again this year at the same time. And I had a conversation with the taxi driver talking about Bitcoin and he thought it was a scam and everything else. And I'm like, ah, I don't know if it's a scam. I mean, there's stuff to be in there, but you have to be mindful. And I remember saying this, you have to be mindful when the time is to get out. And usually when things are calm, it's the time to get out. You don't want to wait till something like this happens and then try to get out of it. But the biggest thing to be concerned with is that there are a lot of people who are very, who have a lot of money tied up into the stuff. Again, probably shouldn't have done that. Should have diversified a little bit more, but that doesn't, you know, this, I really don't think it's a time to go, haha, I told you so's. I think it's more of a time to be concerned about a lot of people who have a lot of money that they're probably, they might wind up losing, or at least it's going to be tied up and inaccessible to them for God knows how long. So keep that in mind while you're out here. Be humble out there, guys. The financial space is a, again, this is why they say it's always risk. There's always risk involved with this stuff. And this is a great lesson in that risk is real. And we, it may feel like, oh, everything's gonna go on forever, but there's nothing that's guaranteed 100%, especially in the financial space. Thank you guys for checking out this video. If you are interested in more videos like this, please hit the like button, subscribe button, and the notification bell, and let your voice be heard in the comment box below with anything you think about this whole FTX debacle going on. And I think we're nowhere near the end of it. There's gonna be a lot of crap coming out pretty soon. So we're gonna keep track of that here on Wrestling With Finance. You guys have a good day and be safe out there.